a voila, the new house. In this case, a, a new studio. Good lord, it has been a few stressful weeks. <laughs> Moving houses is no joke. But we, here we are, here we are with another video. A video I wasn't really planning to record, to be honest, because this month has, has been a roller coaster. It was, uh, I had my birthday, my son's birthday, Christmas, the whole moving houses thing. It has been quite a lot. And I wasn't really planning to make a video on this very last day of the year. But um, yeah, in between moving, <laughs> moving houses and carrying all the boxes, I did manage to work on my game every now and then. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to show you the progress so far. After the last video with the uh, AI of the crab that could see you, detect you and chase you, uh, I went to the next important thing that every game needs, uh, at least in the early stages of development and that is birds and, and fishes fishes is that that's not plural it's fish right not important yeah i developed fish and, and birds um jokes aside I, I felt like i was barely scratching the surface of learning the behavior tree and i just needed a reason to further develop my skills so i picked some background fishes that jump around the sea uh, and some birds that fly away whenever you get close now you know without further ado let, let, let's just get to it a little disclaimer, this isn't a tutorial, uh, this is just a devlog. I am planning to make many tutorials early next year about the state machine, the behavior trees, the player detection. So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe. Um, and with that being said, let's just go and run the game, the current game build that I've got so far. As you can see, there are birds that fly away when you get close. Uh, also, uh, I think my last prototype didn't really have design at all. It was just a bare-bone playground to test around uh, some programming. Uh, in this case, I added some clouds that move in a parallax fashion in the background. I, I think I did some improvements on the water. As you can tell, there, there are fishes. That, that do random stuff in the background. There's some grass, there's some flowers, there are some rocks on the, on the platforms. Uh, I did many changes to the movement system. I, I keep on tweaking it. Uh, for example, when, in, when you go into crouch mode, uh, the shield like slightly tilts whenever you get to a high velocity. So first it's tilted and whenever the velocity lowers, it slowly levels to, uh, to the platform again. Uh, but you know, we are here for the fishes, the fishes and the birds. Um, let me reset real quick. These are not just ordinary birds. No, 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 no. I, I, I yet again made myself way too complicated, way more complicated uh, than I probably should have made it. Uh, because initially I was thinking about having a, uh, a combined scene with predefined birds in it that have predefined animations, uh, maybe a variation or two, but um, yeah, I made it way more complicated. I now have individual birds that are part of a group and they also get scared as a group. So whenever one bird gets scared, it will signal the other birds and then they will fly away as a herd, a herd, a flock, a herd. Sorry, it's, it's, it's like almost one o'clock. The, the monkey brain is not working. A group of birds, all right? Whee! I think there are a couple of more birds right over here. Yeah, and this one bird, he was too far away from the, the other group, so he has no idea what's about to happen. Jump scare! Yeah, so that's the birdo. The fishes in the background are a bit more simplistic. They have two different animations, a, a jump and just a reveal, like uh, way closer to the water surface. Uh, they can go into different directions, they can flip their animation and they have random positions. But they, apart from that, they don't do too many fancy things. Oh yeah, right before recording this video, I was testing out the depth of field. Uh, let me enable it real quick. I'm not too sure what to think of it. Uh, now you have this blurry effect whenever you get closer to the camera. Uh, or further away from the camera but it kind of destroys the charm of pixel art yeah right before recording I, I disabled it again I don't know you know I, I'm constantly figuring out and testing out new things uh, as you can see I, I made some new grass which has a bit more uh, 3d effect to it 
um, there are some 3D rocks in the water and on the platforms that have like pixel art textures to it. There are some flowers. Uh, the platform design has been changed yet again. The color palette has been changed. Uh, again, the, the background clouds with the, the parallax effect. I'm constantly testing out things. And I do realize that it's probably going to change another 10 times in the future. But I think we are heading into the right direction in terms of art style and design. So yeah, that's it. Fishes and, and uh, birds. Um, let me show you a little bit of the, uh, the, the behavior tree itself uh, right over here. And while opening it, I do realize that it's quite difficult to explain or talk about a behavior tree without going into details since this isn't really a tutorial. But I will try and do my best to uh, explain it. At the very top, the tree itself, you will have different branches with tasks in it. Those tasks are the leaves and it will go from top to bottom in this case. So at the very tippity top, there's going to be this check whether the bird is scared or not. If it is scared, it's going to play a fly animation. Uh, and then it will actually fly to a different position in the world. There is some code in this task that does exactly that. Uh, when the bird is not scared, it will never continue and do those tasks. And then it will continue to do the move sequence. The move sequence is pretty straightforward. It picks a random position in the world based on where the bird is located at. Then it will play the move animation. And then it will move to the specific uh, position that has been set during this task. Whenever it's done moving, it will go back to the idle state. And then there's a 50%, like a probability, that the bird is going to peck or not in the ground, you know? Uh, whenever it's pecking, it will play the peck animation. Uh, it will wait until the peck animation is uh, completed, is finished and then it will have another 50% chance of doing another pack. So sometimes it packs, sometimes it does a double pack, and sometimes it doesn't pack at all and just move into the different direction. But it's a constant loop from top to bottom. And in the bird's code itself, it will check whether the player is nearby, and whenever that's the case, it will set the is scared bool to true, and therefore it's going to play the, uh, yeah, the scared sequence. And yes, I do realize if you're not familiar with behavior trees at all, then this doesn't make too much sense. Uh, but don't you worry, I'm gonna make tutorials about this in detail uh, pretty soon, so make sure to subscribe. The fish behavior tree is way simpler. Uh, it first does nothing between three and eight seconds. Then it picks a random position based on its spawn area. And whenever that's the case, it goes into either a jump animation from left to right or from right to left that's gonna be random or it goes into this reveal animation and it will only show its back slightly and that's it and the big challenge with behavior trees is that you want to make reusable code for each tree in this case the birds they go to left or right they have this randomized kind of movement system i probably want to make it so that i can also apply it to the crabs but from my previous video but i'm not quite there yet but i'm probably going to refactor that pretty soon so i don't have like double code so slowly but steady it's starting to look like a game i'm super excited man i'm so happy with the results so far and i honestly cannot wait to continue uh, to, to work on this game and and to give you guys devlogs and tutorials but let me know in the comments below what you think of this prototype so far and uh, yeah with that i i, I want to wish you a happy new year like it's already the last day of the year as of recording right now so i hope you have a great time and i wish you all the best for 2025 and uh yeah I see you guys around, right? Bye-bye.